For a fresh take on this week's Sunday School lesson, you've just tuned into the Gospel Cafe with me, your host, Pastor Will Goatley. And good morning. This is your host, Pastor Will Goatley, and uh, it's kind of a rainy day, but it's, this is the day that the Lord has made, and the Bible says we will rejoice and be glad in it. So I am uh, grateful to be here with our co-host, Reverend Carla Campbell of the House of Refuge Ministries. Uh, Reverend Campbell, you want to say hello to the folks? Good morning to everybody out there. And I, I feel the, uh, the joy despite the rain. How about you? Amen. Amen. <laughs> the joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. And I want to give some uh, morning shout outs to the Calvary Missionary Baptist Church family. I want to say thank you to members of our evangelism ministry. We went out the uh, Saturday morning knocking on doors, uh, witnessing to people, inviting them to church. And uh, we want to say thank you to all those who came out uh, Saturday morning to do that. I also got a chance to worship uh, at least one night with the Central Baptist Church family. They had their March Madness. Ooh this week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and they will be celebrating their 167th anniversary this morning. Uh, I think church started at 745, and then they have another worship at 11 with Bishop John Bryant Mm. of the AME Church. He is a preaching bishop, and his son is a preaching son of a bishop. So (laughs) that's Jamal Bryant up in Baltimore. So uh, we want to give our shout out and celebration to the Central Baptist Church family and uh, my professor mentor, uh, Dr. Robert C. Scott, who is the pastor. And so those of you who know about Dr. Scott and the Central family, tell them Pastor Goatley said happy anniversary. And then we also want to uh, just let you know we're we're getting ready. Everybody's uh, getting ready for Resurrection Weekend. We have revivals going on. We have special events, Mm. cantatas, uh, musicals, all kind of things going on. Amen. So uh, we're looking forward to a great time of worship, uh, celebrating. The fact that Jesus rose from the dead. Hallelujah. Amen. He's no longer in the grave. Hallelujah. The manger's empty. Hmm. The cross is empty. Come on now. And the tomb is empty. All right. Hallelujah. But he is sitting on the throne. (laughs) Hallelujah. And he will be coming back (laughs) again. Uh, Reverend Campbell, any hellos you would like to share with people this morning? Yes, a big shout out to All Things Are Possible Worship Center. Um, I have had the opportunity to fellowship with them all month with the youth and okay. worshiping with them. So to Pastor Bird and the congregation, shout out to you. Shout out to my West Side Missionary Baptist Church Church family. Okay. And to Pastor Bobo, my spiritual father in the ministry. And to the House of Refuse Ministries leadership staff and volunteers. Love you all. Isn't that a blessing? It's good to have a church home. It is. When I extend the invitation at the end of the message, I always tell people Christians were not designed to just be uh, alone, Mm. that you need a church home and you need a pastor. And uh, that's where you grow. You don't know how much faith you have until you have to have faith in with others. (laughs) And you don't have much, don't know how much love you have Ooh. until you have to love those folks. Say that that may not be as loving mm. as you are. So um, you know that's how we grow. Yes, it is. Iron sharpens iron. That's mm. what the Bible says. And so you don't get sharp by being dull. Mm. You get sharp by being with other uh, sharp folks. So uh, we are grateful for church. And we're grateful that we have another opportunity to study the Word of God together. Now, folks, we are studying a passage of Scripture that is called apocalyptic literature, Mm -hmm. talking about the end times. And Daniel, in his book, uh, if you have your Bibles, we're looking at Daniel chapter 8. Daniel, in his book, has several visions, and today... We are going to look at another one of Daniel's visions. Now, the whole unit of uh, this quarter is talking about hope. Mm. 
Amen. And talking about the hope of the kingdom of God. And uh, this curriculum that we are studying, we study it through the Bible. If you study the International Sunday School curriculum, every five years it will take you completely through the Bible. Will it take you through every verse? No, but it will take you through most of the Bible from the Old to the New Testament in a five-year cycle. And so if you stick with it, you will have uh, at least a basic knowledge of the Word of God. So that's what we're doing. We're going along with the International Sunday School curriculum. Our text today is Daniel chapter 8, and we're going to have an extended passage from verse 15 through the end of the chapter, verse 27. And uh, so, Reverend Campbell, I didn't even, we didn't even split it up good, did we? Okay. But if you don't mind taking 15 through 22, and then I'll take 23 through the end of of the chapter. Amen. And I will be reading from the New King James Version. Again, da Daniel chapter 8, starting with verse number 15. Then it happened when I, Daniel, had seen the vision and was seeing the meaning, then su that suddenly there stood before me one having the appearance of a man. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of the Uli, who called and said, Gabriel, make this man understand the vision. So he came near where I stood, and when he came, I was afraid and fell on my face. But he said to me, Understand, son of man, that the vision refers to the time of the end. Now, as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep with my face to the ground. But he touched me and stood me upright. And he said, Look, I am making known to you what shall happen in the latter time of the indignation for all the appointed time the end shall be. The ram which you saw having the two horns, they are the kings of Media and Persia. And the male goat is the kingdom of Greece. The large horn that is between its eyes is the first king. And as for the broken horn and the four that stood up in its place, four kingdoms shall arise out of that nation, but not with its power. Okay, now I'm going to pick up from verse 23 to the end of the chapter. I also will be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors have reached their fullness, a king shall arise, having fierce features, who understands sinister schemes. His power shall be mighty but not by his own power. He shall destroy fearfully and shall prosper and thrive. He shall destroy the mighty and also the holy people. Through his cunning, he shall cause deceit to prosper under his rule, and he shall exalt himself in his heart. He shall destroy many in their prosperity. He shall even rise against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without human means. And the vision of the evenings and mornings, which was told, is true. Therefore, seal up the vision, for it refers to many days in the future. And I, Daniel, fainted and was sick for days. Afterward, I arose and went about the king's business. I was astonished by the vision, but no one understood it. All right, we get a chance to once again dig deep into the treasure of God's Word because it is in God's Word that we get a chance to grow, have wisdom, and even understand the last days. And Reverend Campbell, you know, what one thing I want to make clear to our listeners is that this vision of Daniel has more to do with the last days, uh, even though it is talking about what's going to happen shortly after uh, the reign of Babylon mm -hmm. and uh, what's going to happen uh, with the kingdoms there. This vision is for the last days, and the church age was the beginning of the last days. Mm -hmm. Now, after the last days, toward the end, there will come the last the last of the day. last days. <laughs> yes. And then there will come a last day. The of last, the last day. days. Mm. 
Uh, but right now, because of the church age, we are in the last days. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there will come a time, some say seven years, uh, sometime toward the end, when everything culminates in the return of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And at that last day, the trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ shall be raised and uh, we shall see him as he is. He will come in the clouds of glory. Mm -hmm. He will take care of all the people that have been giving us problems. (laughs) 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 But uh, this is the vision that is in line with our theme of hope. Yes. So we're going to see how much we can make of this ram with two big horns and a shaggy goat. A shaggy goat. (laughs) (laughs) So what does a shaggy goat and a big old ram have to do (laughs) with hope? All right. In verse 15, then it happened. When I, Daniel, had seen this vision and was seeking the meaning that suddenly there stood before me one having the appearance of a man. Now, you're going to have to go back and read the first part of chapter 8 to understand what happened in this vision. Absolutely. Yeah, but basically it is a big ram flying around the earth in different directions, two big horns, one horn a little bigger than the other, and then it meets up with a woolly goat, (laughs) and, and, and things happen from there. And then there's this voice that is telling, uh, that says, I want Daniel to understand Mm -hmm. what is going on. And you know what, church? God wants you to understand what's going on. That's why this apocalyptic literature is in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes it is a mystery for a reason. Yes, you know, Reverend Campbell, sometimes God doesn't want us to know everything, but he wants us to kind of know themes. He wants us to know outlines, directions, metaphors, so that we can be looking out for it. But he doesn't always give us all the details and the specifics that go along yeah, with it. Exactly, Pastor. You know, when you read this, you think, well, why doesn't God just in the dream just make it very, very clear to mm-hmm. Daniel? Why does he use a shaggy goat and a ram flying around and and all of these, what we would call very weird things? Most people would wake up and go, man, that was a weird dream. Yeah, and be scared to the Sunday school lesson. Yeah. That's why some people don't even (laughs) want to study the book of Revelation. (laughs) Think they had some bad food or something. But but God, you know, he speaks to us in the way that he wants to speak to us, that he decides to speak to us. And he often speaks in imagery like this. In visions and dreams, God. God often speaks to us because a picture is worth a thousand words. It is. And and we, even as adults, we really learn far more by yes. pictures than we do by, by words. Oh, um, <laughs> say, just say the word a pink elephant. There you go. <laughs> and there you go. <laughs> I had a vision. Did you? Yes, right. <laughs> and, and so, like you said, uh, you know, God knows what we can handle. He designed us. Mm-hmm. And he knows how to communicate with us. Yes, he and does. he knows how to communicate with his prophets. Exactly. You know, yes. and so when he speaks to us, yes. we have to understand that it is God. Mm-hmm. And, and just that point alone, that it is God, meaning yes. he is omniscient, um, omnipotent. He mm-hmm. knows all, sees all from the beginning to the end. He's you know, alpha and omega. Mm-hmm. And so um, we're not going to understand everything. Yes. We're not going to understand everything. And we touched on this, I think, a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And that is we have to ask God for understanding. Amen. But God does want us to know. God wants us to know. He does. Amen. And so the the voice, which we assume is God, instructs Gabriel Mm -hmm. to give Daniel the interpretation. Now, Gabriel is a messenger angel. Gabriel is uh, associated with divine messages Uh, in the book of Daniel. Gabriel's going to help Daniel understand why it took so long for God to do something when 21 (laughs) days had gone by, but the answer had been sent. But uh, Gabriel had to, Michael had to fight Mm -hmm. the prince of Persia. And Gabriel right. had to let him know something was going on. And then when Mary finds out that she's pregnant, mm-hmm. Gabriel is the angel who sent to give her that news. So Gabriel is usually associated with that. Now, caveat, warning, warning, spoiler alert. Um, please don't worship angels. 
Ooh, that's a good one. People yeah. like to study angels, come up with angel names, books mm. published about angels. Mm -hmm. You got an angel. I got an angel. Do you know your angel's name? Don't ask. Because any angel that will allow you to worship it is stealing from God. Yes, it is. Because God deserves the glory. Mm -hmm. That is hence the origin of Lucifer himself. Hey. And the, and it's uh, warned yeah. of in the book of Hebrew about That's right. uh, angel worship. So very good point, Pastor. All right. Well, hey, we got our first break. <laughs> we need to take a break real quick. But we want to uh, say thank you to one of our ministry partners who's been with us from the beginning. And that is the Bridewell Community, uh, Bridewell Adult Daycare, which um, is located at 2822 Dr. Martin Luther King Drive. The Bridewell Christian Adult Daycare is a, you know, I want you to think about this. Sometimes our loved ones, when they get older, may not need to stay at home alone. Because they don't have any interaction with people. Uh, maybe they might forget how to turn off the oven or something like that. Uh, I want you to consider that when you talk to your loved one about adult daycare, it's not like children's daycare. Yeah, yes, amen. Yes. This is for adults, and adults have activities. And so I want you to call Sister Madeline Bridewell and get the idea that this is not like child care. This is adult daycare. Her number is 314-531-3388. That's 531-3388. And uh, please call her and get some information so you can make a good decision. And we would appreciate if you let her know that you heard this on the Gospel cafe right after this break we will be right back talk a little bit more back we are back with the gospel cafe this is your host pastor will goatley if you've just joined us we are looking at daniel chapter 8 and we're looking at verses 15 through 27 the end of that chapter oh and i want to remind you that we are streaming live on shine690.com and uh so hopefully your smartphone is picking up this your smartphone can get on shine690.com or if you got a radio app hopefully you can pick us up there and we want to say pick up your coffee your hot chocolate your juice your milk your water whatever you got if you're home if you're in your car then uh you know Tune in. Tell somebody to tune in. We got some good Bible studying <laughs> going on uh, this morning. Now, when we look at this vision, and uh, uh, Reverend Campbell was just mentioning this, and I'll ask her to elaborate a little bit more on it. You know, God understands how we learn and how we process information, mm -hmm. and that uh, even Jesus uh, use parables. I'm going to ask uh, Reverend Campbell kind of share a little bit more about that thought. Yes, Pastor would be happy to. You know, in fact, we spoke about this at our um, associate ministers meeting at Westside yesterday. Pastor Bobo really mm -hmm. elaborated on this, but we talked about um, just the connection of imagery mm -hmm. with the words pictures. We learn more, we remember more, we gain more clarity and insight into ideals and concepts yes. when we're able to have a picture mm -hmm. to go along with the words. Right. And so God does that with us throughout the biblical text, all the way up through Jesus Yes. Um, with parables. He spoke right. in stories, in yes. very vivid, detailed stories right. that anybody from the, from the most from educated... The youngest to the oldest, to the oldest, uh, to the uneducated, whatever yeah. you want, whatever age, whatever intellect level, whatever yes. they could pick it up, grab it, grab mm -hmm. that principle, mm -hmm. and and live it. Yeah. And we see all the way to the end of the Bible, Revelation is just packed yes. with imagery, imagery and symbolism. Yes, and uh, symbolism that refers back to Daniel and. Mm -hmm. Imagery, I mean, you got Ezekiel that refers to different things. You have, um, you know, all these uh, prophets in the Old mm -hmm. Testament that God used in ways where not only did they talk about a vision, but they were literally acting out yes. things for people to see. So they would get mm -hmm. a picture of what God's message 
was to them. Yeah. And, and Pastor, I'll just say this. God still today yes. speaks to us yes. through visions and dreams. Repeat that, please. <laughs> God still today mm-hmm. speaks to us, his people, yes. through dreams and visions. Amen. And still in that does. type of imagery. Right. In that yeah. type of imagery. So um, I know some people out there have that particular gifting. Yes. And sometimes they struggle with it. I know I struggle with my gifting in that area, so thinking true. that something was weird, something was wrong with me, Yes, you know, that type of thing. But I've come to understand that it is part of the prophetic gifting in a way it that God It is a God prophetic gifting and, yes. and uh, people, you know, in, in our African-American community, I think we've had people that God spoke to in dreams and visions, um, but uh, didn't really understand the linkage between that and the prophetic. Mm-hmm. And then uh, maybe sometimes the counterfeit would come along yes. where Miss Cleo comes in. Very, you know? yes. So yes. the prophetic yes. is not psychic. Thank you. <laughs> There's a difference. Thank you. You know, the psychic is a counterfeit of the uh, authentic. Yes. The authentic is prophetic. All right. Well, I yes. can't go into that too much. Mm. <laughs> that's going out on a, a another, Ooh, another path, that's a, that's right? A good path. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now look at verse eight. Well, look at verse seventeen real quick. You know, Daniel is so overcome by what's going on that he falls on his face. Mm. But the angel Gabriel says, uh, "Son of man," not talking about Jesus here. He's just talking about Daniel. I want you to. I want you to understand that this vision is for the time of the end, for the end times. And um, verse 18, one way to interpret this is not that Daniel was just having a dream, but that Daniel had been so overcome by the vision that he passed out. Mm. That's one way to look at it. Now, if you want to look at it as he was dreaming, that's okay, too. But I want to look at it as he was so overcome by the vision Mm -hmm. that he actually passes out. But the angel revives him and stands him back up. So, number one, the angel did not want him to be worshipped, you know, did not want Daniel to worship him Mm -hmm. because worship only belongs to God. And number two, sometimes you can be so overwhelmed by what God has given you that in our physical frame, we really can't handle it all Mm -hmm. because Daniel is processing all this stuff. He doesn't really understand it. That's why the angel had to come and give him the in interpretation mm. now let me just have another little little thought here when you operate in a spiritual gift the gift may need interpretation not translation Ooh. if you speak in tongues mm-hmm. tongues go with interpretation mm, say that because you're not translating the tongue you are interpreting the tongue so mm. people will understand the meaning mm. of the message. Mm. All right, I've jumped in another one, didn't I? Yes, you did. <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, you did. I just want, want y'all to know God works with interpretations. Yes, he does. He gives you the interpretation of a vision because it's the meaning he wants to get across and yeah. the application. Mm-hmm. See, he wants you to understand what it means. Right. And then he wants you to understand what it means to you. Yes. How to, in, you know, ap- apply what you have been given. Yeah. And, and that mm-hmm. is, you know, you make a very good point there, Pastor. Um, and that is God wants us. The end point is he wants us to apply yes. his word mm-hmm. to our life. Yes. Because that's the light that will shine mm-hmm. to others, that they yeah. will see him and Amen. know that he is God. Yes. If they cannot see that application in our life, mm-hmm. then we can have all types of dreams and visions. Yes. And, and be, you know, enamored and oohed and awed by how we shook Some the experiential of it. people get too wrapped up in visions and dreams in the from experiential God. of it yes but the, the application is what matters of the observation yes. get caught up in what i saw can i tell you what i saw can mm-hmm. i tell you what i saw well at some point you got to process what you saw so that you can understand what it means yes. then you can understand what you need to do about it mm-hmm. 
You know, is it a command that you need to obey? Is it a warning you need to heed? Mm -hmm. Is it an instruction you need to follow? You know, what do you need to do with this vision that has happened? And this is part of what, you know, this lesson is about today. Yes, it is. That it isn't just about the vision. Mm -hmm. And it isn't just about the interpretation of the vision. It's about how do we apply yes. this mm -hmm. to the church yes. and then to our own lives. Because mm -hmm. it's still leading us today. Yes. And that's the hope. Yeah. Because he's giving us understanding yes. of things that are actually happening now. Oh. So that we will not be afraid. Amen. But can walk in Amen. power and authority. And yeah, confidence. it's not just about a flying ram. <laughs> and a shaggy goat. And a shaggy goat. A shaggy goat. <laughs> <laughs> So in verse 20, let's look at that. I think we could get into this uh, right before our, our break. Number, verse 20, the ram which you saw having the two horns, they are the kings of Media and Persia. Now, uh, Medes, the Medes and the Persians uh, joined forces under a king so that they conquered Babylon. And the Persian Empire is the empire that we talk about when we read the book of Esther, mm -hmm. yes, sir. the Persian Empire at this point. And part of the challenge is the books of the Bible are not in chronological order. Yes. And uh, so sometimes people don't understand that the book of Daniel is taking place before the book of Ezra and Nehemiah and before, you know, these other books. So that uh, when you're talking about a chronology of the Bible, you have after the history books Babylon takes the folks into captivity. You have people like Daniel and Jeremiah prophesying to the southern kingdom mm -hmm. of what to do. Daniel here is, uh, is teaching people how to handle uh, being in captivity, how to be uh, a captive without succumbing to the culture. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah is talking about giving hope to the captives, warning the captives first, giving hope to the captives that God has not forgotten you. And, and so when Ezra and Nehemiah come along, what they're doing is trying to rebuild a city and a temple and a people mm -hmm. who had already been destroyed by Babylon. And uh, it's the Persian Empire that allows Nehemiah to go back to Jerusalem to rebuild. Well, that wasn't too quick of a history lesson, was it? Oh, it was quick enough. That, there's a lot there. There's a lot to unpack. There's it's a, a lot whole to unpack. lot going on. <laughs> the shaggy goat is still <laughs> Hallelujah. taking up time. Well, at least we got the Persian kingdom. The Medes and the Persians <laughs> is the ram. We're Some of y'all seen those We're ram the commercials, right? The ram horn. <laughs> yeah, we got the ram. We pick, we, we, what? We build a ram tough truck. I tell you, I love Here Bible in study. St. Louis. I love Bible study. <laughs> Hallelujah. We want to share with you uh, another one of our ministry partners. Sister Angela Brandon has a wonderful daycare, Angel's Dream Daycare, located at 3701 Cook in the city of St. Louis, 63113. And they would be glad to take care of your child from birth to 10 years old. Walk-ins are welcome. They're open from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And uh, we would just like for you to give them a call for more information. And here's the number. Write it down. 314-652-1668. You're looking for a quality child care for your baby, your niece, your nephew, your grandchild. Uh, 314 652-1668. Please tell Sister Brandon you heard it on the Gospel Cafe. All right. We got a station ID and another break coming up. And then we're going to actually get to that shaggy do uh, goat. Don't give us a shaggy dog. That shaggy goat. <laughs> Amen. KSTLAM. Shine 690 and Shine 690. All right. We are back. And uh, our break uh we have before us a great lesson today. You are listening to the Gospel Cafe. <laughs> I have to remember to say that. I am Pastor Goatley, and I'm the pastor of the Calvary Missionary Baptist Church here in St. Louis, Missouri. At least this is we're broadcasting from St. Louis, Missouri. But we're going all over the world via the Internet Shine690.com, www.shine690.com, 
And uh, we thank God for the technology that allows this broadcast and other broadcasts to be streamed around the world. And you can pick us up wherever you are. And uh, we are also grateful to have our uh, co-host, Reverend Carla Campbell. And Reverend Campbell, I know I ask you this almost every week, but sometimes we have new listeners that may not know what the House of Refuge Ministries is and what you do. Would you just briefly share with us the House of Refuge Ministries? Yes, we are a um, ministry that shares the love of Jesus Christ to families broken by abuse. We try to share that love through practical ways Mm -hmm. um, by helping those who have been victims of or who are experiencing either physical, verbal, uh, sexual, religious abuse. Mm -hmm. And we would be happy to help any uh, woman, man, child that's out there and to help um, train church leaders, pastoral staffs on how do you minister to families in your congregation that are going through those things. And we're to walk alongside churches in helping you do that. And so please give us a call at 636-498-7077, 636-498-7077, or look us up on the web at www.houseofrefuseministries.net or on Facebook uh, at House of Refuse Ministries. would love to help you out. Amen. And also, uh, Reverend Campbell is kind enough to post these broadcasts on our YouTube channel. And that is a YouTube channel, uh, Gospel Cafe STL. And our Facebook page is Gospel Cafe STL. Like us on uh, Facebook and uh, we'll do our best to give you some updates. (laughs) And uh, you can also uh, find out of some past broadcast and Bible studies uh, on our YouTube channel, uh, which is a uh, recording of this broadcast. So if you had to go to Sunday school and you couldn't finish, you had to go to church and you couldn't finish the broadcast uh, in a reasonable amount of time, you can pick us up on our YouTube channel. Now we finally get to the goat. (laughs) Shaggy goat. Verse 21, and the male goat is the kingdom of Greece. Mm. The large horn that is between its eyes is the first king. Now, we know from world history that was Alexander the Great. Yes, it was. And Alexander the Great was a very young ruler who conquered quite a bit of the land around the Mediterranean Mm -hmm. in a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. I think he died at the age of 33. Yeah, he was very young. And uh, so... Uh, He is the mighty king. And then in verse 22, as for the broken horn and the four that stood up in its place, four kingdoms shall arise out of that nation, but not with its power. Mm -hmm. Now, what we know from world history is four of Alexander's generals split up the kingdom of Greece and Uh, became uh, leaders of those uh, kings of those uh, territories that they divided among themselves. And one of those territories, I think the Seleucids, uh, was around the the Middle East. The Ptolemies were in Egypt. Uh, And then there were some others in uh, uh, Greece and Asia Minor. So uh, what you have here is a prophecy that comes true Many years after the death of Daniel. I mean, Daniel dies before Alexander is ever born. Mm -hmm, Way before. And uh, Alexander lives at a time um, when these visions uh, had already been written Mm -hmm. in the book of Daniel. And so this is a prophecy about uh, the Medes and the Persians and a prophecy about the kingdom of Greece. Now, what's going to happen then in verse 23 and following is a mysterious figure Mm. appears on the historical horizon. (laughs) He arises with a lot of bluster Mm. and evil and fierceness. Look at verse 23. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors have reached their fullness, a king shall arise. Now, in some Sunday school lessons, I know in the one Sunday school commentary I looked at, uh, they're going to point to a guy named Antiochus 
the fourth, I believe, Antiochus Epiphanes, who is over the place where Israel is, Mm -hmm. sets himself up in the temple as a king. Mm -hmm. He defiles the temple by slaughtering a hog on the altar. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is a type of the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. Now, the Antichrist is a mystery man because we don't really know who the Antichrist is, Mm -hmm. but we know what he's like. Yes. He's like Antiochus Epiphanes. <laughs> yes, he is. Yes, he is. And, and what, yeah. you, what we see here developing is just the rise of evilness. Yes. Or the, the, the spread of uh, depravity in the yeah. hearts of mankind. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, as we continue on in the, the other verses that we're going to be looking into, but yes. you just see evilness. And so when we see things today— uh huh. You know, we really shouldn't be surprised. Right. Not that we have to accept it. Yeah. But we really shouldn't be surprised when we see some of the things that are going on now. I don't know about you, but from the yeah. time I, in the last 30 years or so, mm-hmm. I might be dating myself there. But anyway, yeah. in the last 30 <laughs> years, <laughs> my eyebrows raised because of just some yeah. of the acts of evilness oh boy that you see going and the capacity to do evil oh my goodness Uh, you know uh this is the dramatic tension in the prophetic works Hmm. the dramatic tension is god we know you're just Hmm. we know you're good Mm -hmm. but you have allowed evil Hmm. and suffering to take place in your world yeah yeah you know, but yeah. God had, you know, I don't agree with those who say God gave up the title deed to the earth. God is still the owner of everything. Yeah. He still sits on the throne. Yeah. And he's still in charge. Yeah. And, and this scripture right here lets us know that because yes. God is telling us uh-huh. in Daniel. Yeah. Thousands of years ago. Uh huh. That evilness is oh. going to abound. There's going he is to be letting a evil run evils. amok yes, for a time. Yes. But it won't be victorious. Yes. Yes. It, it appears that evil has the victory. Yeah. But in the end, we win. Yes. And and, and let's bring this maybe to an individual individual's yes. a home. Yeah. You know, God, why does bad things uh-huh. happen to me? Yeah. You know, I hear that a lot in oh, dealing yeah. with broken, hurting people. Yeah. You know, I've had women. Why? Why did God allow me to be raped? Uh huh. You know, why did, uh, you know, uh, God allow me to be abused as Traumatic, a child? Traumatic, evil, tragic. Yeah. Why did God allow stuff. my brother to be murdered? And, oh. and these types of things. And yeah. we get angry at God. Oh. Yes. You know, that yeah. God was supposed to stop these things yeah. from happening. Yeah. But we forget this tension that there is evil yes. in the world. Yeah. And there is choice. Yeah. You know, that there's we choice, make. there's evil, but this world is not all she wrote. That's right. And that's the whole yeah. hallelujah. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said the arc of just the arc of the universe be, takes long, but it bends toward justice. Mm-hmm. So it may not happen when you think it should yes but god is gonna right every wrong yes he will you know yes he will our god there is, is a awesome judgment god. day coming come on now and uh even though evil is allowed to run amok right now and we have prof- you know prophetic insight that there's going to be a king who's going to rise up and he's going to be boastful. Mm. He's going to let evil run amok. Mm-hmm. You don't even have to look at the last days. No, you don't. You, you can just look around yes, you. Yes, you can. <laughs> yes, you can. And, and there's that whole thought. We were talking about this earlier, the difference between chronos, which is the ticky tock yes, time. Yes. You know, um, that we look at every day on our clock or yeah. the Kairos time. That's right. And you see that phrasing in the Bible. The appointed time. We yes. see it here in Daniel eight nineteen. You'll see it in the book of Acts. Yeah. Jesus himself says that the Father knows the appointed time. There are just appointed times when God says it's kind of like you got a child running around in the house and mm-hmm. they're tearing up Jack and they're just doing things. And that time you're just waiting for the time where you say, Okay, yeah. enough. 
time to sit down. Look, <laughs> sit down. I want to encourage folks before we take our last break that even though suffering and evil takes place in the world today, that you live in a parallel kingdom. Listen, even though Egypt was a place of bondage, the people of God lived in the land of Goshen. Mm. The land of Goshen didn't have the 10 plagues. That's right. Egypt went through the 10 Come plagues. Come on now. But God's people were protected. Mm. from the 10 plagues and even when the death angel was going to come by god instructed his people on how to be insured mm. against the death angel by the blood come on, on the now. i knew you was going there on the bl- <laughs> come on now okay i All gotta right stop now. and get you ready to start stop preaching right there the blood <laughs> the blood of jesus come Amen. on All right, we're having fun this morning, (laughs) so uh, we're going to take our last break and then come back with the rest of the Bible. Steer back. This is the Gospel Cafe, and I'm your host, Pastor Will Goatley. I am honored to be the pastor of the Calvary Missionary Baptist Church in the city of St. Louis. We're in Midtown, a couple of blocks west of Jefferson on Martin Luther King, and I'm here with our co-host, Reverend Carla Campbell, we've been having a good time studying the Bible. Yes, we have. I pray that you're getting something out of it as well, because the Sunday school lesson isn't just about the lesson. It's about what we can learn that we can apply in our own lives. Isn't that right? Amen. It is. So um, this man of evil in verse um, 23, this king shall rise. He has fierce features, the new King James says, who understands sinister schemes. Mm. Mm. His power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. Now, here's a verse, a part of a verse that really is controversial, because where does he get his power from? Mm. You know, some may say God allows him Mm -hmm. to run amok Mm -hmm. for a while. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, Our God causes him to run amok for a while. Now, church, uh, this is not a end times lesson, but you have to have a little background of the end times to understand the lesson. Um, you know, many people will teach that in the book of Revelation, there will be a time of Jacob's trouble. There will be a great tribulation period. Uh, we may not be in the great tribulation, although people may be going through tribulation. Uh, like a seven-year period where folks are going to see bad things happen, and uh, within that, a three-and-a-half-year period where it gets really bad. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So you got a bad time, then you got a really bad time, time. and then you got like a battle of Armageddon where everything comes to a head, and then Jesus comes and uh, takes care of everything. So in these last days, there will rise up people in power, who will operate in this spirit of antichrist, Mm -hmm. operate in the spirit of wickedness Mm -hmm. and evil. And as we tried to point out before the break, that even though there's wicked and evil going on in the world, there's also good and justice going on in the world. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. People can still follow Jesus. And the test is, will you still do right when other folks are doing wrong. Amen. And isn't that the message of Daniel? That is. And that is. And also, will we, as the body of Christ, still stand Yes. for what we know is right according to the word of God? Yeah. It's not so much according to the laws of the land, and I want to be careful with that. I'm not saying yeah. go out there and be lawless. Yeah. But what I am saying, though, we have to stand in alignment with the with word, the word yeah. of God. God. And yes. so that is that being light and darkness. Dare that is to that be a be, Daniel. That's it. We Dare have, to be a that's Daniel. Because Daniel was in a kingdom of all kind of stuff going on. Yes, he was. But Daniel was true to the word of God. Mm-hmm. And uh, the test for us in these last days as God's people, uh, will God find faith? on the earth yes when he returns in fact jesus asked that question will the son of man find Mm -hmm. faith on the earth Mm -hmm. Uh, because that's what he's looking for he is not coming back for a lodge he's not coming back for a fraternity or sorority he's (laughs) not coming back for an organization he's coming back for the church that's it And he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle or blemish or any such thing because 
Persecution purifies. Yes, it does. Now, I hate to burst your bubble. <laughs> That's right. But we don't even grow in our prayer life until we got problems. Come on. The refining fire of God is a Amen. It's a process. It is. And the process, the question is, will we stand true? Mm-hmm. Will we stand for the Lord? That's it. Even if everybody else is going the wrong way. Can God count on you? Can God count on me? And uh, he's just given us a warning that this king is going to be here. He's going to destroy. Uh, he's going to prosper and thrive. He's going to destroy the mighty and also the holy people in verse 24, which we would identify as the people of God. Verse 25, through his cunning, he shall cause deceit to prosper under his rule. Mercy. Hmm. He shall exalt himself in his heart. He shall destroy many in their prosperity. He shall even rise against the prince of princes. Hmm. But he shall be broken without human means. Oh, God. Hey, that's where you shout God. right there. <laughs> Jesus. That's, that's right. What you just say Jesus. Amen. <laughs> He's going to do a whole lot of damage. And I just want to say, as as Reverend Campbell has pointed out, you know, maybe today a lot have you've gone through a lot. Mm, yes. You know, uh, maybe you haven't had a vision of a ram and a hairy goat. <laughs> you know, you haven't uh, had a prophetic dream or vision, uh, but you've gone through some things in life where you've asked the question, you know, why? Mm-hmm. You know, why did. God allow me to be abused as a child. Why did God allow me to go through such a terrible relationship? Uh, why is God uh, not doing anything about uh, what, you know, I don't know the answer to all those questions. What I do know is God is still on the throne yes. and Jesus is still Lord Hallelujah. and God still has opportunities for people to change, to, to repent uh, and to be delivered. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, I stand on the word of God. He won't put any more on you than you can bear. You know, maybe you think he's overestimated your abilities. Yes. You know, God, you just don't realize, you know, what I'm going through. Well, God does know what you are going through. Yes. And the good news is he is there for you. Yes. Yeah, Hallelujah. Reverend Campbell, Campbell, take that up for me. Hallelujah. And I will just say this, you know, um, I will challenge um, this is challenging me and, and I challenge those listeners that to shift mm-hmm. how you see God. OK, this is shifting yeah. how we see God, because yeah. it says that evilness shall even prosper yeah. and thrive. Yeah. So every time you see something gold and glitzy doesn't mean it's from God. Amen. Everything that looks like is growing is from yeah. God. It's from it's not it may not be from God. That's right. So evil will grow as yeah. well. It's not about how it looks. Yeah. It is what the motivation of the heart is. Uh-huh. And only God can truly discern that. Yeah. And so you if you know that you in your heart are doing what God is saying do. And if you know in your heart mm-hmm. that you uh, believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and you're acting that out and how you live your life, then know that you have victory through Christ Jesus. And so shift how you see our God. Shift how you see our God. He's a mighty awesome God in your life today. Hallelujah. Yeah, don't don't just look at God from a kindergarten expression. You know, look at the Lord from a place of maturity and victory. Amen. Amen. Well, after Daniel saw all this, he said he he got overwhelmed, but then he went about doing the king's business. <laughs> so whatever you're going through, hey, shake yourself off, get yourself together, and keep doing the king's business. Well, until the next time, as they say, the clock on the wall is the boss of it all. I want you to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us today. You have been listening to The Gospel Cafe. This is Pastor Will Goatley, your host. To contact me, friend me on Facebook at Will Goatley or follow me on Twitter 
at Will Goatley. I personally invite you to join me at the Calvary Missionary Baptist Church on Sunday mornings. Our worship starts at 1030 a.m. We're located at 2822 Dr. Martin Luther King Drive in the city of St. Louis. The zip is 63106. We're two blocks west of Jefferson in Midtown St. Louis. Thank you.